So my question is one that I'm very happy to be asked and that's about motivation and how to keep our students engaged and how to actually make them motivated to study English. Because if we have a desire inside us to do something, we will do it for sure because it doesn't matter if we're very successful at it or not, in the beginning we have a real desire to do it so we will continue trying little by little until we can do it. And someone I think of um, who had a great motivation from inside to do something was Sir Edmund Hillary and he was the very first person to climb Mount Everest. And that was a huge undertaking then with no great equipment, nothing, hard work, um, severe weather conditions, but he really wanted to do it. So none of the hardship mattered. He just had a great desire to do it and he made it. So that's the first thing I want to say. If we can help our students have a little spark inside them of interest for English, that's the key to motivation. Okay. So in motivation, I think there are three things that I think are very important. One is the teacher. The teacher is really crucial for motivation. And the other one is success. And the other one is the material that we give the students to interact with. So those three things, the teacher, success, and motivation. So if I start with the teacher, which is us, I'm a teacher myself. Um, enthusiasm and passion are infectious. If I come into class and I say, morning everyone, I'm not feeling passionate or excited, and that feeling will translate to the students. But if I come in and I say, morning everyone, how is everyone this morning? It's a very different atmosphere in the classroom. So I think a teacher's passion is a key to motivation and excitement. And the classroom atmosphere is something that is very important, and this is controlled by us teachers. So you can imagine um, if the classroom is a place where students are judged, um, they believe the teacher doesn't really care about them, they're going to feel anxious in class. And when we feel anxious, we're unable to learn properly because we're worried all the time. Um, and we're also not going to be effective if we have to produce something like we have to get up and speak. So creating a warm, supportive atmosphere in a classroom is very crucial. Um, there's a wonderful thing called the effective filter, the effective filter. And this is the feeling that a student has in a class. And if the effective filter is very high, it means the student is anxious or bored, they're not interested. That's not a good thing. They are not open to learning or good performance. If the effective filter is very low, then it means that they calm and relaxed in class. And so as teachers, I think it's our aim to provide a classroom atmosphere in which the students have as low effective filter as possible. And I'd like to just end this section on teachers with um, a task for you. Some of you may have heard this in my presentation. I'd like you to think of your favorite teacher ever. Who is your favorite teacher? Why is he or she your favorite? And this next question is very important. How did you feel in that teacher's class? And did you feel motivated in his or her class? And why or why not? And if you think of your favorite teacher and you answer those questions and then you think about how can I be like my favorite teacher in class, that would be a really fun exercise for you to do. And then do the same with your worst teacher. And then if we can avoid the things that our worst teacher did in class and avoid the things that made us feel bad in our worst teacher's class, then we can pay attention to not doing those things in our classrooms. Okay, so that's teachers. The next one is success. And success is feeling good about myself. So it doesn't matter if it's a big success or if it's a small success. My student in America is a refugee. And when she came to America and came to my class, she couldn't write at all. She'd never held a pencil. And I taught her to write the ABC. And the first time she wrote her name, four letters, H-A-J-A, -A, changed her life. And she looked at me, she had a success, 
that she thought writing was something really marvelous. She wrote four letters of her name and she said to me, for the first time in my life, I think I'm smart. It completely changed her life. So success in class means little things. It doesn't all have to be language. Not all of our students can be successful language learners because not everybody has the same skill. So if we can find a way for all of the students in our class to shine, to have a little bit of success, success leads to feeling smart or good about yourself. Self-confidence leads to motivation. And so success and motivation go hand in hand. So for example, we can help our students um, shine in different ways other than language. We could give a student um, a job in the classroom. For example, for this week, you are going to make sure that all the books um, that the students use at the end of the class, you're going to collect them and you're going to put them on the table. That's a job. Now, if that student does the job and he does it well and you say, thank you very much, congratulations, good job, just that is going to make the student feel proud of himself, self-confident, feel like he matters in the classroom. And that success is a very powerful motivator. And again, it doesn't all have to be with language. Um, and this leads me right into success with language and um, the materials that we use. And yes, even for the lowest level students, we do want them to have some success with the language as well. Um, and there are ways that we can have our students feel successful with this. And I think it's really important that we think of these in every lesson that we prepare and every lesson that we teach. So the very first thing I think is for us to know our students well. What is their language level in our class? So that we can provide them with a graded syllabus, step by step by step by step. So that at every step of the way, the students are recycling language and they're getting some new language that they can learn. So they feel when they learn the new language, they feel smart when they've got it. But it can't be in too much, too big a step. And it can't be in too little a step. It needs to be just the right step so they feel challenged but not overwhelmed. And of course, the language has to be in manageable chunks. My very first lesson, I tried to teach my five-year-old students the entire 26 letters of the alphabet. And of course, they failed. And that was nothing to do with their intelligence. That was nothing to do with them at all. It was all to do with me. I chose to give them too much to study in one lesson. The other thing when we think of motivation, if you think of something that really interests you, you get like a spark in your heart and you go, wow, yes, and you get all excited. I think if we can find ways to, if we know the interests of our students and we can find a way to ignite that spark and their curiosity, that's a key to success in the classroom with their motivation because they'll have a reason i'm drawn in i want to know more of this so it's very important to choose interesting things for students to study and to talk about the next one i really really believe very strongly in when it comes to motivation and that's curiosity which links to what i said before about the interesting topic if we are curious about something, it's drawing me in. I'm involved with this. And I don't know if you know that wonderful quote, tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, and now the important part, involve me and I learn. So the more we involve our students in their learning, the more motivated they will be. So if we can find a picture that is, um, interesting and will make them curious about it and then we ask questions about it and we draw them in that's a really big step in motivating them the other thing i think is really important is to have fun in class you know study is fun and interesting it shouldn't be all hard work and tests and and uh, struggle and strain so if we can have some fun games that um, get students up and moving and um, involving everybody, kind of like um, a fun competition. So for example, is a find someone who activity. So I write down what food I like 
and then we all get up and I have to find five people in the class who like the same food as I do. It's fun, everybody's speaking at the same time, nobody is on the spot um, having to ask a question in front of everyone where they might feel nervous. So those kind of games, I think, are very good motivators as well. And they're also personal. It's very important to have students find a reason to use English for a meaningful and real purpose. And that's personalization. So once they've learned some grammar or once they've learned some vocabulary, if there's any way to do a fun task that has them using the language that they learned in a fun way. That is another great motivator. And this is especially for young learners, but I think it's true for everyone. Very young learners have very short attention spans. So you've heard the uh, saying, variety is the spice of life. So especially for the younger learners, the more things we can do in a lesson, the better changing from one thing to the other so that they don't have time to get bored, they're excited by this and now we're moving on to the next task, so that the whole way through the lesson they're engaged and excited and looking forward to what's coming next. And basically I want to end by saying that um, every day teachers wake up and give of themselves. So there's a lot of teachers giving to their students. So I want to end by giving something to you. I am absolutely convinced that every single one of you, if you think back to your favorite teacher, I am absolutely convinced that every single one of you has changed the lives of one of your students. And if you think back to your favorite teacher, do you think your favorite teacher knows the impact they had on you? I bet not. So I can tell you, and I want to thank you for this, that every single one of you has changed a life of at least one of your students. So thank you for watching. Thank you for trying to always do something great for your students. And thank you for being teachers. <laughs>